um, what we're going to be talking about uh, for the next few weeks, we're going to talk about um, who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? And um, one of the first introductions that kind of lays out who this Jesus is comes to us from Matthew chapter 1. And we'll get to that in just a moment. The wisest of all of Israel's kings wrote in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, this. He said, a good name is more desirable than great riches. So, when it comes to giving children's names, it can be pretty difficult. Uh, some people want to be practical. Some people want to be intentional. Some want a name that is descriptive of their child's personality. But naming children is a tricky thing because the fact is our names do mean something. I want to take you on a little trip through time before we get too much further down this road talking about who is this Jesus. Um, you, do you know that the most popular names of children's boys and the girls in the U.S., oh, let's say around 1880. Do you know what they were in 1880? Anybody have any idea what those names were? Because the Social Security Agency <clears throat> tracked that information for us. And in 1880, for girls, the most popular name was Mary. Ah, huh, isn't that interesting? Mary was the most popular. And for boys, the most popular name was John, right? Uh, about 20 years later, anybody want to guess what the most popular name for uh, girls was about 20 years later, 1900? Anybody want to guess? Mary. Um, and for boys, um, this is going to be a real tough stretch too. For boys, John. So fast forward about another 40 years. Um, anybody want to guess what the most popular name for girls was 40 years later? Mary. Um, anybody want to guess what it was for boys? Wrong. James. Most popular name. Then, then get this, in 1947, for the first time in almost 70 years, the most popular name for girls changed to Linda. Yeah. And for boys, what do you think? No, that would have been funny if it was John. James. James is still the most popular name. So, fast forward another uh, uh, 23 years to 1970. Uh, the girl's most popular name has changed again. It's Jennifer. And for boys, it's Michael. By 1990, 100 years later after the Social Security uh, agency had started tracking names, the list from, 1980, from 1880 compared to the list of 1990 had actually shared only one name that had remained in the top 10 all of those years. Only one name remained in the top, top 10. It's the name Sarah. Sarah remained in the top 10 for over 100 years. But for boys, there were two names. Anybody want to guess what those two names were? Nope, not John. <laughs> it was Joseph and James. The last year that was listed on the Social Security Agency site is 2022. And the most popular name for girls is now Olivia. And the most popular name for boys is Liam. Liam. Who is this person that we see named as Jesus? Who is this Jesus? What, what kind of name is that anyway? What does it mean and does it matter what we call him? Why does it seem that Jesus has so many names in the Bible? Are they important? And these are all really great questions we're going to get to in some time, but I want to begin with Jesus' name. And the first thing you need to know is that Jesus' name is actually it's an ancient name. Did you know that the name Jesus, it doesn't originate? in the New Testament. Jesus' name, or at least the very early form of it, actually comes to us from the Old Testament. Has anybody ever heard the song, 12 men went to spy on Canaan, 10 were bad and 2 were good. What did they see when they spied on Canaan? 10 were bad and 2 were good. It's a great song if you're a child, but many of you obviously aren't children. So, in Numbers chapter 13, verse 16, we read this about those men who went to spy on Canaan. These are the names of the men Moses sent to explore the land, spy on the land. Moses gave Hosea, son of Nun, the name 
Joshua. Jesus' name in the Greek language, which is what we find the New Testament written in, Jesus' name in the Greek language is Jesus. Greek was the language of the world then, much as English is the language of the world now. But Jesus' name is actually an ancient Hebrew name. In Hebrew, we would actually say Yeshua is how we would pronounce that name, or Joshua. And what does that ancient name Joshua mean? It's a name that refers to the divine help of God. The name means God or Yahweh is salvation. Hmm. And that's where Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 and 21 come into play here. Because an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, Joseph, and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sin. The Hebrew name of Jesus, this Joshua, Yeshua, is the oldest name in Scripture that contains even a portion of God's name, Jehovah. And much as ancient Israel's leader Joshua led the nation in battle after battle to conquer the promised land after the death of Moses in the Old Testament, Jesus does the same thing for us in the New Testament by by, by battling and, and conquering sin. He's saving his people, you and I, from death and the grave. One of the deadliest earthquakes ever in recent years filled the nation of Iran with sadness. But in the midst of that despair, there's one story that gave people hope. Cradled in her dead mother's arms, surrounded by the crumbling remnant of a collapsed building, a baby girl was found alive. The mother shielded this six-month-old Nassim from the falling debris. She saved her life. Rescuers found the girl 37 hours after the earthquake. Hessa Modine Farakar from the Red Crescent Public Relations the Deputy Director in Tehran, she said, she is alive because of her mother's embrace. The baby girl is in good condition considering the circumstances. The prophet Isaiah writes in chapter 53, verse 5, he said, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. The one with an ancient name has shielded us from sin's devastating impact and saved us through his sacrifice. So Jesus' name is an ancient name, but not only is it this ancient name, but did you know that Jesus' name is actually a common name? I think sometimes we, as those who know Jesus or trying to know Jesus better, we mistakenly believe that Jesus' name is so special that no one else would ever dare have that name. But a look back through history indicates just the opposite. The name Yeshua or Joshua was a very popular name among Jews and what would be considered the pre-Christian era of the world. There's an ancient Jewish historian by the name of Flavius Josephus. What a great name, Flavius. I would love to have that name. I could have a lot of names. A lot of fun with the first name, Flavius. Flavius Josephus, he lived in the first century and was a descendant of this Jewish priestly family. That was a pretty big deal back in the day. It would be akin to being um, a Walton or from the Walmart family, the Waltons. Or if you could be a Gates or a Buffett. So but Flavius Josephus, that's a pretty big name, pretty big deal. And Josephus in his writings of life in the first century names no fewer than 19 bearers of the name Jesus in multiple volumes written in Greek. According to Rubel Shelley, who wrote a book called The Names of Jesus. He said the name Jesus was also found on numerous grave markers and tombs that were found in and around Jerusalem. And sometimes in its Hebrew form of Yeshua, you would see it. Another time in its Greek form of Jesus. As a matter of fact, the name was so common that there's historical evidence that suggests that Jesus bar Joseph, which means Jesus, son of Joseph, was in prison. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 16, 
you would probably know him as a, notor a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. So can you get that? Make that connection if you know anything about the story. Barabbas, who was ultimately released so that Jesus would be punished, shared Jesus' name. That's how common it was. His full name may have been Jesus Barabbas. Ah. Anyway, then all of a sudden, this common name sort of seemingly disappears from circulation. And why is that? Why all of a sudden is it everywhere you look and then it just seems to disappear? There's probably two reasons for that. There's another book uh, called The Name of Jesus. It's written by a well-known and, and well-regarded uh, speaker and uh, theologian named Elmer Towns. And he said this, The Jews stop using the name because it's so closely related to Christianity, which they rigorously opposed. The Christians refused to use the name for the opposite reasons. To them, the name was special and it was held in veneration. It was almost thought sacrilegious that anyone but Jesus would bear that name. But here again from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 2, we read, He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to Him. Nothing in His appearance that we would desire Him. I think I think this is extended to Jesus' name as well. There's nothing really special or ornate. Just a name from history. A name from antiquity. It's just a name. But Jesus' name? Uh -huh. Jesus' name is a powerful name. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Then in John chapter 16, verse 23, in that day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And then in the book of Acts, as the church has come into existence, the kingdom of God is being realized on the planet Earth. In Acts chapter 19, beginning at verse 13, we read this. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed they would say in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches I command you to come out seven sons of Sceva a Jewish chief priest were doing this and one day an evil spirit answered them Jesus I know and I know about Paul but who are you then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them Gave them such a beating, they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. There is a power in the name of Jesus. Not in some magical incantation from the seven sons of Sceva, this Jewish high priest, found out by jumping out. They found out by jumping um, on, uh, having themselves jumped on because they thought his name was like a magic lamp they could rub. But, but, the conclusion of our prayers, do we do the same thing? We treat Jesus' name like a magic lamp where we think that somehow that kind of makes our prayers some kind of magical thing that we're doing instead of believing in the power of the actual person of Jesus himself. What does Paul tell us? In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, very simply he says this, that Jesus has been given the name that is above all names. Here's the last thing I want to share with us about who this Jesus is. Jesus' name, friends, Jesus' name is an offensive name. It's an offensive name. John writes about this in chapter 15. Jesus is speaking these words. He says, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I've chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name. For they do not know the one who sent me. 
Friends, have you ever wondered what it is that people find particularly offensive about the name of Jesus? I can give it to you in one verse, at least what I think it's related to. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. From John 14, 6. Soren Kierkegaard, who was a Danish theologian and philosopher, he said this, when one preaches Christianity in such a way that the echo answers, away with that man, he does not deserve to live. Know that this is the Christianity of the New Testament. Kierkegaard says, capital punishment is the penalty for preaching Christianity as it truly is. At the beginning of this time with you this morning, I shared with you a quote from the wisest man who'd ever lived, from King Solomon. You remember that quote? It was chapter 22 of Proverbs, a good name is more desirable than great riches. But there was another king, a great king, only this one was a conquering king. Anybody here ever heard of Alexander the Great? Does that sound familiar? The great Alexander, he was this incredible warrior. He, he conquered the entire Mediterranean world, a kingdom that stretched from what is now modern-day Bulgaria to Egypt, to Greece, to India. I mean, that's just a massive section of the world. As one story goes, Alexander received one of his own soldiers in court one day. The soldier had been accused of cowardice of running away from a battle. Alexander looked at the young man and he asked him what his name was. And the young man answered trembling, Sir, my name is Alexander. Alexander's compassion disappeared. And he said again, What's your name? Again, the young man answered back, Alexander is my name, sir. The great warrior king became enraged and he shouted at the soldier, change your behavior or change your name. Change your behavior or change your name. I'm thankful that Jesus' name perfectly matches his behavior and his character. His name is a good name. His name is a saving name. His name alone can save. Can save you, can save me. And as Peter and John explained to the religious leaders of their day after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus in Acts chapter 4, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He, Jesus, he is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. That is who this Jesus is. This morning, I want to encourage you, if you've not taken an opportunity to respond to this Jesus, I would love to talk with you about that. Let's pray. God, this name of Jesus, it is a powerful name. Lord, it is a name that is above all names. God, it is a saving name. Lord, and no matter where we are today, may we surrender to that name. Whatever it is in our lives that we are holding on to, may we release it to the name that is above everything. Father, we are grateful that Jesus does not need to change his name.
for His character. God, it is Your character. One of love, mercy, compassion, goodness, grace. Thank You, God, for that Jesus in whose name we pray. 